everybody. Welcome back to the Bible Breakdown Podcast with your host, Brandon Cannon, where we are just breaking down God's Word one chapter at a time. Welcome to Numbers chapter 7. And I'm really looking forward to getting into this chapter because it's going to feel a little bit like we're back in the book of Leviticus, but not really. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of just reading names and things, but I want you to get the mindset of this. So as always, once again, want to get back into the idea of context is king. If we read this just as a chapter by itself, we can look at this and say, what in the world is going on? But if we realize what's going on around the context of this chapter, it is so beautiful what is happening today. So kind of bring you up to speed if you're just now joining this podcast. The nation of Israel has just finished getting the covenant from God. Moses goes up on Mount Sinai. He comes back down with the Ten Commandments. They have the promise that God wants to be with them. They build the tabernacle, the Ark of the Covenant, all this wonderful stuff. And they are about to set out from Mount Sinai and they are headed toward the promised land. It's going to be an amazing journey. It wasn't intended to take 40 years, but it does because of just the unbelief and unwillingness of the people. God wanted them to come out of Egypt, go to Mount Sinai, and go into the promised land. But the entire book of Numbers, you know, the Hebrew Bible calls it in the wilderness because that's what it is. And it is, if I were to give it an overall principle, it would be learning how to trust God. Learning how to trust God. I don't know, have you ever been around someone who is uh, a brand new Christian? Man, they love the Lord. But any little thing seems to just kind of throw them off a little bit. Like they just have so many questions, which is a great thing. But something doesn't go right or God doesn't answer a prayer the way he thinks or they think that he should. And they're just, oh, I don't know. But you talk to someone who's been a Christian for a really long time. It takes a lot to get them discouraged because they've just been through things. They've journeyed with the Lord. And now... They just trust God. And that's what the book of Numbers is all about, is learning how to trust God. And if I were to give an overall principle, a title for today's chapter, chapter 7, it would be that it's an honor to be able to give to the Lord. The honor of being able to give to the Lord. And what we're going to do is we're going to read through this, and it is about offerings for the dedication of the tabernacle. So they've built a tabernacle. And we read in the book of Leviticus how God finished or gave them wisdom on knowing how to. They finished. Moses anointed everything, and then there they go. But this goes into what happened afterward. Now, imagine you were born a slave. You had nothing, really, of yours. Everything you had was what had been kind of given to you as leftovers by your taskmasters. And now you're free. Now you have things. Like you have levels of wealth. The Bible said that when they left the nation of Egypt, that they uh, were given spoils. They were, they were given gifts and gold and all these things by the Egyptians. And so now they had something to give. And at the dedication of the temple or tabernacle, every single tribe was able to give something to their Lord. You don't truly understand how awesome it is to be able to give until you've been through a season when you couldn't. You know, people who are very blessed and very financially affluent, you know, they, they just throw money around like it's nothing because they, they don't know what it is to not have it. You don't know how wonderful and an honor it is to give until you don't have it. So what we're going to do is we're going to read through this. And this is it's going to take a minute. There's a lot of verses here because God actually takes a moment to let every one of the tribes come up to the dedication of the temple themselves and give something to the Lord. And I, I just, I think it's awesome that he didn't just say, well, they gave and moved on, but say, you know what, this, this tribe was able to give something and this tribe was able to give something. And so I want you to kind of feel the honor that they have as well when they were able to lay something down at the feet of the God who had set them free. So I think this is just so awesome. So let's start reading. If you have your Bibles, your NLT version, open up with me to Numbers chapter seven. Let's read God's word together and just enjoy this moment of just honor that the, the nations of Israel, the tribes of Israel are able to enjoy. So here we go. Number seven, verse one, the Bible says, on the day Moses set up the tabernacle, he anointed it and set it apart as holy. He also anointed and set apart all its furnishings and the altar with its utensils. Then the leaders of Israel, the tribal leaders who had registered the troops, came and brought their offerings. Together they brought six large wagons and 12 oxen. 
There was a wagon for every two liters and an ox for every liter. And they presented these to the Lord, which remember, all caps, Lord is Yahweh, the Lord in front of the tabernacle. Then the Lord said to Moses, receive their gifts and use these oxen and wagons for transporting the tabernacle. Distribute them among the Levites according to the work they have to do. So Moses took the wagons and oxen and presented them to the Levites. He gave two wagons and four oxen to the Gershonite division for their work. And he gave four wagons and eight oxen to the Merarite divisions for their work. All their work was done under the leadership of Ithamar, the son of Aaron, the priest. But he gave none of the wagons and the oxen to the Kohathite division because they were required to carry the sacred objects of the tabernacle on their shoulders. The leaders also presented dedication gifts uh, for the altar at the time it was anointed. They each placed the gifts before the Lord, before the altar. And the Lord said to Moses, let one leader bring his gift each day for the dedication of the altar. So remember, these are people who were born with nothing. Now they have this opportunity to bring something that is theirs and offer it to the Lord. So just imagine the moment of honor and thankfulness. And here we go. On the first day, Nahashon, the son of Abinadab, the leader of the tribe of Judah presented his offering. He offered The offering consisted of a silver platter weighing three and one-fourth pound, a silver basin weighing one and three-fourths pounds, as measured by the weight of the sanctuary shekel, the sanctuary unit of measuring money. These were brought, both filled with grain offerings of choice flour moistened with olive oil. He also brought a gold container weighing four ounces, and is filled, it was filled with incense. And he brought a young bull, a ram, and one-year-old male lamb for a burnt offering, the male goat for a sin offering, and for a peace offering, he brought two bulls, five rams, five male goats, five one-year-old male lambs. This was the offering brought by Nahashon, the son of Abinadab. On the second day, Nathanael, son of Zuar, leader of the tribe of Issachar, presented his offering. His offering consisted of a silver platter weighing three and one-fourth pound of silver basin weighing one and three-fourth pounds as measured by the weight of the sanctuary shekel. These were both filled with grain offerings of choice flour moistened with olive oil. He also brought a gold container weighing four ounces, which was filled with incense. And he brought a young bull, a ram, a one-year-old male lamb for a burnt offering. The male goat for a sin offering and for a peace offering, he brought two bulls, five rams, five male goats, five one-year-old male lambs. This was the offering brought by Nathaniel, the son of Zuar. On the third day, Eliab, the son of Helon, the leader of the tribe of Zebulon, presented his offerings. His offering consisted of a silver platter weighing three and one-fourth pound of silver uh, basin weighing one and three-fourths pounds measured by the weight of the sanctuary shekel. These are both filled with grain offerings of choice flour moistened with olive oil. He also brought a gold container weighing four ounces, which was filled with incense. He brought a young bull, a ram, a one-year-old male lamb for a burnt offering, and a male goat for a sin offering. For a peace offering, he brought two bulls, five rams, five male goats, and a five-year-old male lamb, Um, and and five (laughs) one-year-old male lambs. This was the offering brought by Eliab, the son of Helon. On the fourth day, of Eliezer, son of Shadur, leader of the tribe of Reuben, uh, he presented his offering. His offering consisted of a silver platter weighing three and one-fourth pounds of a silver basin and a silver basin weighing one and three-fourths pounds as weighed by the sanctuary shekel. And these were both filled with grain offerings of choice flour moistened with olive oil. He also brought a gold container weighing four ounces, which was filled with incense. He brought a young bull, a ram, and one-year-old male lamb for a burnt offering, and a male goat for a sin offering, and for a peace offering, he brought two bulls, five rams, five male goats, and five one-year-old male lambs. This was the offering brought for Eliezer, son of Shadur. On the fifth day, Shemuel, of, son of Zerushaddai, leader of the tribe of Simeon, presented his offering. His offering consisted of a silver platter weighing three and one-fourth pounds of silver basin weighing one and three-fourth pounds as measured by the weight of the sanctuary shekel. These were both filled with grain uh, offerings of choice flour moistened with olive oil. He brought the gold container weighing four ounces, which was filled with incense. He brought a young bull, a ram, and a one-year-old male lamb for a burnt offering and a male goat for a sin offering. And for a peace offering, he brought two bulls, five rams, five male goats, and five one-year-old male lambs. 
This was the offering brought by Shemuel, son of Zerushaddai. On the sixth day, Eliasaph, the son of Duel, leader of the tribe of Gad, presented his offerings. His offering consisted of a silver platter weighing three and one-fourth pounds and a silver basin weighing one and three-fourths pounds, as measured by the weight of the sanctuary shekel. These were both filled with grain offerings of choice flour, moistened with olive oil. He also brought a gold container weighing four ounces, which was filled with incense. And he brought a young bull, a, a ram, a one-year-old male lamb for a burnt offering, and a male goat and a, for a sin offering. For a peace offering, he brought two bulls, five rams, five male goats, and five one-year-old male lambs. This was the offering brought by Eliasaph, son of Duel. If you can tell, there's a pattern forming here. They're all bringing the same thing. And I don't think I've read it perfectly yet. So <laughs> let's see if I can do it this time. All right, everybody, cheer on Pastor Brandon. Here we go. On the seventh day, Elishima, the son of Amahud, leader of the tribe of Ephraim, presented his offerings. All right, let's see if I can do this. <clears throat> His offering consisted of a silver platter weighing three and one-fourth pounds and a silver basin weighing one and three-fourth pounds, as measured by the weight of the sanctuary shekel. These were both filled with grain offerings of choice flour moistened with olive oil. He also brought a gold container weighing four ounces, which was filled with incense. He brought a young bull, a ram, and a one-year-old male lamb for a burnt offering, and a male goat for a sin offering. For a peace offering, he brought two bulls, five rams, five male goats, and a five one-year-old male lambs. This was the offering brought by Elishima, son of Amehud. <laughs> almost, almost got it right. Okay, day eight. Don't worry, I got more times to try this. Here we go. On day eight, Gamaliel, son of Paduzer, Paduzer, PD, PD, leader of the tribe of Manasseh, presented his offering. His offering consisted of a silver platter weighing three and one-fourth pounds of a silver basin weighing one and three-fourths pounds, as measured by the weight of the sanctuary shekel. These were both filled with grain offerings of choice flour moistened with olive oil. He also brought a gold container weighing four ounces and which was filled with incense. He brought a young bull, a ram, and a one-year-old male lamb for a burnt offering, and a male goat for the sin offering. For a peace offering, he brought two bulls, five rams, five male goats, and five one-year-old male lambs. This was the offering brought by Gamaliel, son of P.D. <laughs> On day nine, Abaddon, the son of Gideonai, leader of the tribe of Benjamin, presented his offerings. I don't know if you can guess, but this is what he brought. His offering consisted of a silver platter of one and three-fourths pounds and a silver basin weighing one and three-fourths pounds, as measured by the weight of the sanctuary shekel. Can you believe that? He also... These were filled with grain offerings of choice flour, moistened with olive oil. But wait, it gets better. He also brought a gold container weighing four ounces, which was filled with incense. He brought a young bull, a ram, a one-year-old male lamb for a burnt offering, and a male goat for a sin offering. Don't lie, he's not done yet. For a peace offering, he brought two bulls, five rams, five male goats, and five one-year-old lambs. This was the offering brought by Abaddon, the son of Gideonai. On day 10th, Ahazer, son of Amisha, Amishadai, leader of the tribe of Dan, presented his offerings. His offering consisted of a silver platter weighing three and one-fourths pounds and a silver basin weighing one and three-fourths pounds as, as measured by the weight of the sanctuary shekel. These were both filled with grain offerings of choice flour moistened with olive oil. He also brought a gold container weighing four ounces, which was filled with incense. And he brought a young bull, a ram, one-year-old male lamb for a burnt offering, and a male goat for a sin offering. For, for a peace offering, he brought two bulls, five rams, five male goats, and one five one-year-old male lambs. I'm still messing this up. And he brought uh, oh, the guy, brought it. Okay, here we go. On day 11. All right, let's see if I can, how fast I can read this one. Here we go. On the 11th day, nah, this is not going to be fast. Pa Pajil, son of Ekron. Akran, the leader of the tribe of Asher, presented his offerings. Here we go. His offering consisted of a silver platter weighing three and one fourth pounds and a silver basin weighing one and three fourths pounds. He measured by the weight of the sanctuary shekel. These were filled with grain offerings of choice, moist flour, and olive oil. He also brought a gold container weighing four ounces and filled with incense. He brought a young bull, a ram, a one year old male lamb for a burnt offering, the male goat for a sin offering, and the peace offering. He bought two bulls, five rams, five male goats, and five one year old. Five one-year-old male lambs. This was the offering brought by Pajil, the son of Akron. If I could do this, I would do this in the 
theme of 12 Days of Christmas because that's what it's starting to sound like. But don't worry, we're almost finished. We've got one left to go. On the 12th day, Ahira, the son of Enon, the leader of the tribe of Natali, presented his offering. I don't, you're never going to guess what he brought, but, but I mean, just wait for it. You're not ready. Here it goes. His offering consisted of a silver platter weighing three and one-fourths pound and a silver basin weighing one and three-fourths pounds. Can you believe it? <laughs> he measured, as measured by the weight of the sanctuary shekel, though, all right? These both filled, were both filled with grain offerings of choice flour moistened with olive oil. He also brought a gold container weighing four ounces, which was filled with incense. And he brought a young bull, a ram, and a one-year-old male lamb for a burnt offering, and a male goat for a sin offering. For the peace offering, he brought two bulls, five rams, five male goats, and five one-year-old male lambs. These, this was the offering by Ahira, the son of Enon. Wow. Okay, here we go. Verse 84. So this was the dedication offering brought by the leaders of Israel at the time of the altar was anointed. Twelve platters, twelve silver basins, twelve gold incense containers. Each silver platter weighed three and one-fourths pounds. Each silver basin weighed one and three-fourths pounds. The total weight of the silver was 60 pounds, as measured by the weight of the sanctuary shekel. Of course, each of the twelve gold containers were filled with incense, weighing four ounces as measured by the weight of the sanctuary shekel, and the total weight of the gold was three pounds. Twelve young bulls, twelve rams, twelve one-year-old male lambs were donated for the burnt offerings along with their prescribed grain offerings. Twelve male goats, goats were brought for the sin offering. Twenty-four bulls, sixty rams, sixty male goats, and sixty one-year-old male lambs were donated for the peace offerings. This was dedica the dedication offering for the altar after it was anointed. And whenever Moses went into the tabernacle to speak with the Lord, he heard the voice speaking to him between the two cherubim above the ark's cover, the place of atonement that rests on the ark of the covenant. Covenant, And the Lord spoke to him there. Well, we actually made it. <laughs> we made it all the way through it. And here's, here's the question. Verse 84 through 88 gives a summary of, of everything they bought or brought. Why didn't they just do that? <laughs> why didn't it just say all 12 tribes got together and them jokers brought a bunch of stuff? You know why? Is because when you have had nothing and you have the opportunity to have something and you're able to bring a portion of that back to God, then you'll truly understand why it is an honor to take a moment to say, you know what? The tribe of Naphtali, they used to be slaves, but now they're not. And they had an opportunity to give to the Lord. The tribe of Asher, they used to be slaves. And now they have a chance to give to God. The tribe of Dan, the tribe of Judah, you know, all these different tribes. And so I think it's actually beautiful that God gives them their moment to say, God, you have set me free. It is an honor now to bring back something to you as worship. And I want to ask you this question as we get ready to end our day. When you have an opportunity to give to the Lord, do you see it as an opportunity or do you see it as an obligation? I see no obligation here in this text. I see people who willingly brought to the Lord. And if you look at the context of where they were, could you do anything else? The Lord has been so good to them. He has delivered them. He has given them more than they ever had. It is their honor to give back to the Lord. And I think if we looked at giving in this way, man, we would not only would we give, but we would give with such an, it would just change everything. So as we get ready to end our time together, I'd love to hear in the comments down below, if you're listening to this on the podcast, make sure you go to my YouTube uh, channel and, and comment on this. You can go to my Facebook channel and comment on this, and I'd love to hear about it. Let me pray for us, and I'm going to read the verse, and we'll be done for the day. Father, thank you so much for today. Thank you that giving to you is an honor and a joy. And I know sometimes we live in a culture that wants to be very me-centered and, and what's in it for me. I pray that we'll always shake that off and realize that in the kingdom of God, it is an honor to serve because we have been served so greatly by you. I pray you will put that deep in our hearts today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God's word says, Numbers chapter 6, May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor, favor and give you his peace. I love you. I'll see you next time for Numbers chapter 8.